Hello. In this video, I would like to take you through setting up some of the most commonly used features on the Discovery, and also show you a few features that are a little less obvious, but no less useful for that. The first thing I would recommend is to download the Land Rover iGuide app. This contains not only a full searchable copy of the handbook, but also a reference guide for warning lights on the dashboard, a frequently asked questions section, and a visual tour around the inside and outside of the car with information on the controls, buttons, and features. It's a great source of immediate information when a question pops into your head, or you just see a button and you wonder, well, what does that do? Another download is the Land Rover Remote app. Your car comes with a SIM pre-installed by the retailer who should have spoken to you about the setup of your account that enables many of the intelligent features on the car. And don't forget, every new Land Rover comes with the offer of a free off-road experience driving one of our cars with a qualified instructor. There is no better way to learn the full capabilities of your new car, and it's great fun too. Okay, let's start then with the smart key. Lock and unlock seem pretty obvious with a reassuring click answering each one. Pressing the lock button just once will lock the car. Pressing twice will double lock. This means the car cannot be unlocked from the inside. So even if someone smashes a window, they still can't open the doors. Next, there's a button to unlock just the boot. If you have a powered tailgate, this will open and close the tailgate automatically, so do ensure that there is space for it to safely operate. Now, there are sensors that will stop it if obstructed, but you'll notice I use my arm rather than my head to demonstrate that. Power tailgates can also be operated by the button above the number plate on the outside, a button by the driver's knee inside, and a button on the back of the tailgate itself. The split tailgate provides a load-bearing shelf capable of taking the weight of two people, which can be folded separately and redeployed using the control inside the load space. It'll fold up automatically when the powered tailgate closes. If you wish to adjust the height the tailgate opens to, if, for example, you have a garage with a low ceiling, reposition the tailgate to the desired height, hold the button on the back of the tailgate until you hear a beep, and this will store that height to memory. So long as the smart key is in your pocket, sweeping your foot under the rear corner of the car will trigger the tailgate to open or close. Next, there is a handy button to trigger the lights. So if you're approaching the car in the dark or simply trying to find it in a dark car park, well, this will switch the lights on. By default, they'll stay on for 30 seconds, and this can be extended up to four minutes if you want using the instrument panel in the car. More on that later. Unlocking the car will also trigger the headlights, and they'll remain on for a short period after locking to provide light to see you to your door. And the final button is a panic alarm. Press for three seconds, or press three times in three seconds, and the horn will sound and the hazard lights will flash. After five seconds, this can be cancelled by holding the button for a further three seconds. Holding the unlock button down will operate global opening, lowering all the windows to allow air into the car before you enter on a hot day. Now, similarly, if you get out and then realise you've left a window open, hold the lock button to activate global closing to raise all the windows and secure the car. Now, these operations can be enabled or disabled using the instrument panel options. If your car is fitted with keyless entry, you don't even need to remove the key from your bag or pocket. As long as it's within a foot or so of the car, as soon as you put your hand around the door handle, the doors will unlock. When you leave the car, place your thumb on the end of the door handle to secure the vehicle. To use the third row seats, simply pull them out of the floor and then click the headrests into place. Higher spec cars have powered seats that can be controlled from the main touch screen, switches on the pillar adjacent to the second row seats, or the load space control panel. Access is via the rear doors. The release on top of the second row seats will tilt the seat and then roll it forward. Once you've clicked it back in place, a bar under the seat will roll the second row forwards or backwards to share legroom out between the passengers. When you're not using the third row seats, they can be folded down by pressing the button on the side of the headrest to allow it to drop forwards, and then once more to release the back of the seat to fold down into the floor of the boot. Again, if powered, they can be controlled via the touch screen, second row, or load space controls. Folding the second row seats 
involves dropping the headrests using a button on the side of the headrest and then pulling the lever on the side of the seat. Pull the seat back forward until it locks in place. If powered, this can be achieved with the touchscreen or load space controls. Getting into the car then, the first thing you need to do is find a comfortable position. Seat controls can be found on the outside of the seat. Steering wheel adjustment is either electric using the joystick on the right hand side of the steering column or manual. Pull the lever on the underside of the steering column down, adjust the reach and rake to suit, and then push the lever up to lock the steering wheel in place. Mirrors are adjusted using the controls mounted on the driver's door. Select which mirror to adjust using the buttons and then use the joystick to adjust the angles. Incidentally, if you have power folding mirrors, pressing both buttons together will fold them in. Useful if squeezing through a tight gap. Once everything is adjusted to your satisfaction, if you have memory settings, you can save these positions. Just press the M button and then within five seconds, press one of the numbered memory settings. You'll hear a chime to confirm that it's saved. You can switch between stored settings just by pressing these numbered buttons. Great if you share the car with another driver. Controls for the electric windows are located on the driver's door. Locking the operation of windows from the rear seats will also engage the child locks on the rear doors. Now, most people will want to leave their windscreen wipers set to auto. Move the stalk to its lowest position and then come up one notch. Sensitivity can be adjusted using the rotating collar. Pull forward for screen wash and the outer collar operates the rear wiper and the button on the end controls the rear screen wash. Similarly, the headlights are best set to auto by rotating the outer collar. Pulling the stalk towards you will flash the main beam. When driving at night, pushing the stalk away from you will toggle the main beam on and off. There's an array of controls on the steering wheel. On the right hand side are the controls for cruise control. Press set when traveling at your preferred speed and the car will automatically maintain that speed until you touch the brakes or press cancel. Pressing the accelerator will cause the car to speed up, but when you release, it will return to the set speed. Pressing plus or minus will increase or reduce the set speed. If cruise control has been cancelled, pressing resume will return the car to the last set speed. If your car has adaptive cruise control, a radar monitors the speed of the car in front of you. If they're travelling slower, the car will automatically match their speed. The buttons on the left and right will increase and decrease the distance between you and the car in front. Whilst you need to be travelling over 20 miles an hour to activate cruise control, adaptive cruise will match the speed of the car in front all the way down to zero. If the traffic restarts within three seconds, your car will pull away with the traffic. Any longer than that, and you'll need to give the car permission to go with just a gentle press on the accelerator. This function means that adaptive cruise control can be used in tiring stop-start traffic situations. The limb button switches the function between cruise control and speed limiter. Lane Keep Assist can be toggled on and off with the button marked with converging white lines. The final control activates the heated steering wheel. On the left side, the circular dial controls volume and buttons to skip tracks or change radio stations. The menu button triggers the instrument panel menus, allowing configuration of safety systems, heads up display and driver convenience features, while the outside of the dial controls navigation through these menus. Explore these options to set the car up to your preferences. The phone icon will answer a call or start the process to dial a contact on a connected phone. Pressing it in the middle of a call will end that call. A quick press on the voice control button will allow you to use voice commands. Wait for the chime and then call home. A full list of available commands can be accessed on the main infotainment screen. Starting the car is as simple as putting your foot on the brake pedal and pushing the start button. So long as the smart key is in the car somewhere, the engine will start. When you switch the car on, the 10 inch infotainment screen will display three main options, navigation, media, and telephone. If you haven't already paired a phone, it will prompt you to do so. Tap on the phone tab, then open Bluetooth devices on your phone and select discovery. Accept pairing on both your phone and the screen and from now on, it should automatically pair each time you get in the car, allowing hands-free calls, voice dialing, and music streaming over Bluetooth. Text messages can be displayed on the main screen, and a soft key allows for them to be read aloud. On Apple phones, it's necessary to enable this feature by selecting Settings and Bluetooth, then selecting the connection to the vehicle and enabling Show Notifications.
if you prefer. Connecting your phone with a cable will allow Apple CarPlay or Android Auto to mirror your phone screen on the car's infotainment system. A long press of the voice command button on the steering wheel will then connect you to your phone's voice assistant. Going back to the home page, tapping on the media tab will take us to the DAB radio. Tapping source will reveal the phone that you've just paired as a possible audio source. Radio stations can be easily selected from the menu or you can simply use the voice commands from the steering wheel. Tune radio to BBC Radio 2. The third option from the home screen is the Navigation Pro system. To input a new destination, tap on the magnifying glass and then type any postcode, address or point of interest into the search box at the top of the screen. You can also search for businesses and transport links, hotels and restaurants. Where possible, the system will show TripAdvisor reviews. Destinations can be easily set by voice. Navigation. Take me to 33 Baker Street, London. As well as appearing on the main 10-inch screen, navigation instructions will also be shown on the cluster display in front of the driver. If the car is fitted with the interactive driver display, the screen can be reconfigured for a one or two dial display by pressing menu and selecting display options. You can even bring the map across the whole screen, retaining a digital readout of your speed. Discoveries specified with navigation are supplied with a 4G data connection to allow over-the-air updates of infotainment systems and maps, and provide live traffic, flight information and internet search. When the system has an update available, it will alert the driver on the main menu screen and ask for permission to update when you switch off the engine. Only agree at a convenient time that the car must then remain switched off and locked for up to 30 minutes whilst the update is applied. Swiping to the left from the home screen reveals additional features such as 4x4 information and driving efficiency analysis and options for smart settings. The car can be set to recognise different drivers either by different smart keys or by the signal from their mobile phone. So the system can develop separate profiles for each driver's preferences. If memory seats are fitted this starts with automatically putting the seat in the correct position for each driver. It can also analyse behaviour to pre-select navigation routes based on your regular routine, store audio preferences and remember climate settings. So the car might automatically put the heated seats on when it's below 6 degrees outside. Remember that you listen to a particular radio station on the way to work, but listen to a podcast on the way home. Know that on Thursday you come home via the gym and set the navigation accordingly. It will also remember that you like a one dial display, but your partner prefers two dials with the map shown between them. Obviously, this involves storing a level of personal data. So when setting the system up, you can choose what data is stored on each profile. If you don't want it to store location data or information on your phone calling habits, just deselect these options. Below the main touchscreen, you'll find the climate controls. The centre dial controls fan speed, while the left and right dials give temperature control for driver and passenger. Pressing these dials in will toggle function to control the heated seats. There are also buttons here for heated front and rear windscreens and air circulation. Discovery uses a rotary gear shift controller which rises up when the ignition is switched on. Press on the brake pedal and rotate the dial to select reverse, neutral or drive. To select sport mode, press down slightly and rotate one more notch. This will alter the operation of the automatic gearbox, holding onto gears longer to give punchier performance. You can manually shift up and down the auto gearbox using the paddles either side of the steering wheel. To return the car to automatic operation, hold the right paddle towards you for three seconds. When you come to a stop, you can rotate the dial back to park or switching off the ignition will automatically return it to park before it descends back into the console. Pressing the terrain response control causes the dial to rise up and you can turn it to select different driving modes. The car will alter throttle response, traction control and differential settings to deliver the best control and grip on a variety of surfaces. Pressing the dial back into the console activates auto terrain response with the car using sensor data to determine and automatically engage the most appropriate drive mode. Discovery's variable height air suspension can be controlled from the next cluster of buttons. 
Discovery descends 50 millimetres to allow easier access getting in and out of the car and can rise up 75 millimetres from normal drive height to give maximum ground clearance over rough terrain and enable the full 900 millimetres of wading depth. The rear suspension height can also be controlled using the switches in the load space, which can make loading the boot or hitching a trailer easier. The electronic park brake will disengage automatically when you drive away and re-engage when you switch the engine off. A manual override control is located on the centre console, rearwards of the air suspension controls. When driving, be aware that a start-stop system is standard, so the engine will cut out when you come to a stop instantly restarting in the time it takes for your foot to move from the brake to the accelerator when you pull away. This can be overridden with a control on the lower panel, but it delivers a surprisingly high fuel saving and helps reduce air pollution in cities and towns. All cars are fitted with exhaust filters. These need to refresh occasionally and you may notice more visible exhaust emissions whilst this is happening. For a diesel it tends to happen when the car is being driven at higher speeds and the exhaust gets hot. For a petrol, it happens more frequently when you lift off the throttle and more oxygen passes through the system. Occasionally, the car may display a message saying drive to clear. This is most common on diesels which have predominantly been used for short, low-speed journeys, in which case they need a blast down a dual carriageway. For petrols, it happens when they've been used under load, like towing. Find occasions to lift off the throttle and slow using engine braking to clear the filter. Automatic braking systems for city driving are standard and detect other traffic, pedestrians and cyclists, preventing collision or mitigating damage. Cars fitted with adaptive cruise control have a high-speed emergency braking system. The lane keep system will provide a torque steer back into the lane if the car thinks you're drifting beyond the lane markers, so it's important to indicate when changing lane. If blind spot assist is fitted, the door mirrors incorporate a blind spot warning system lighting up when a vehicle is travelling alongside and flashing rapidly to warn you if a car is closing to overtake. If you start to move into the path of an adjacent vehicle, the car will deliver a torque steer in an attempt to avoid a collision. For additional safety, in the event of an accident where the airbags are deployed or the fuel safety cutoff is activated, the car will automatically contact emergency services, sending GPS location data. Emergency services can be contacted at any time by pressing the right-hand button above the rear-view mirror. The left-hand button summons breakdown assistance. Both these buttons have covers to avoid accidental operation. When refueling, simply press the filler flap. So long as the car is unlocked, it will open. A smart mechanism will prevent filling with the wrong fuel. Diesel cars have an additional spout under the bonnet for topping up with diesel exhaust fluid. Warnings will flash up on the information display to let you know when you're running out. You get about a thousand miles notice, and if it runs out as a legal requirement, the engine will not start. The remote app provides monitoring of many systems. When you first run the app, there's a quick start guide to aid setup, and then it provides control over remote locking and unlocking of the car, tells you how much fuel there is left in the tank, reports the last parked location of the car so you can always find your way back to it, and it can export a full journey log in the form of an Excel spreadsheet. So if you need to monitor business mileage, that's easy to keep track of. It also provides remote activation of the climate system, cooling the interior in summer before you get in, or warming and de-icing the car in winter whilst keeping the car fully secure. HSE luxury specification cars can even raise and lower the second and third row seats using commands from the remote app useful if it's raining and you want to get the car ready for passengers or a large load. This video has really only touched on the essentials. Please make use of the iGUIDE app or videos on our YouTube channel to find out more, or contact your retailer with any questions. Thank you for your time and enjoy your time with the Discovery.